How long have you been practicing Taekwondo? Um, I've been practicing Taekwondo since I was seven. Uh, I've, I turned 21 this year, so almost 14 years now, but uh, 13 up to this point. What started your career in Taekwondo? Um, my whole family does Taekwondo. My grandparents, my parents, my brother, everyone is, was involved in Taekwondo for me growing up, so it was just a natural thing for me to get involved in. What made you decide to compete in the Olympics? Um, for me, it, when I was seven, when I started, you know, once I saw and knew about these bigger events where Taekwondo could take me, I went home, I told my mom, um, I'm going to be Olympic champion, I'm going to be world champion, I'm going to be the best there ever was. And, in my division and I said that as a seven-year-old kid. I mean just the whole city of, of Wiley itself, this, this community, Wiley High School, I mean it really helped me along my process. You know throughout high school I, I couldn't have, have done it, I couldn't have achieved these things if my teachers, if my counselors, if everyone didn't work with me and help, really helped me along the way and um, I mean I met my, my boyfriend here in high school senior year and he's just been an infinite source of inspiration for me. It was a whole family event for me. My dad's my coach. He was in my chair at the Olympics. My brother, my younger brother, was my um, training partner at, in Rio leading up to the Olympic Games. So I mean, my family has played a crucial part in my athletic development and me getting to the Olympics. It took years and years. I mean, I, hours upon countless hours of training and hard times and crying and practice and hit my shit and I'm bruised. Like. It has been countless things like that that has led up to this, and, and this medal for me represents every kick I've thrown since I was a seven-year-old little girl saying I was going to the Olympics. Outside of competition, the opening ceremonies was amazing. It was a surreal experience to get to walk with the U.S. delegation out into that arena where there's so many people, and every our whole group chanting USA. And it was an amazing, surreal experience that. I mean, I, that's all. That's the only word I can use to describe it. Was was surreal. I, I my spot where I walked out. I somehow maneuvered near the front, and I could see Michael Phelps and the flag and his jacket light up. And it was just that's what made it for me. It was really amazing. When I stepped up onto the podium and I saw the flag raised, there's a picture of me. I'm holding my medal, and I just have that face of this is mine. I did it. I accomplished what I. I came home with a medal and. I mean, that picture for me, just in that moment where I was just like, this is mine, I did this, this represents so many things to me. I have World Championships next year. I got bronze at the last World Championships, but um, one of the other things I said when, from you know, a really young age was that I'm gonna be a World Champion. Mom, I'm gonna be a World Champion. Watch, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do it. And I got bronze at this last um, World Championships. I lost with two seconds on the clock, one point, you know, there was literally like two, one point, and so that was pro that was probably one of my toughest losses. And so I have another chance this this upcoming year. I have team trials in January within the U.S., and then I have World Championships. Uh, usually it's around May, middle of the year, um, 2017. So that's what I have my the next upcoming big goal, and uh, obviously 2020. I, I plan on bringing home the gold. I think just to understand the amount of, of work that there isn't any shortcuts to achieving things that, that you want to achieve. You know, it, it, it's not just magic, it's all of a sudden, uh, whoa, where did that come from? I, I mean, that's not how it happened. It was years of hard work, just like if you want to graduate in a certain percentage of your school, it takes hard work. You have to, you have to put in the work. There's no shortcuts, and I couldn't, you know, impress that upon a student enough. There's no shortcuts. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the work. But then also to understand, don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take high school, it's not the end of your world if you get a one bad grade on a test. There's ways to come back from that. And the advice I would give is, how, how do you come back from that? How do you face adversity? It's not about the fact that you lost, it's about what you do with that loss to become even stronger. So that's the advice I would give.